Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode in my series of Behind the Raw, where I take you with me onto Lightroom Classic and I talk you through my thoughts about an image from a recent shoot, my workflow, my edit, and any mistakes that I would have made so that you don't have to. Now, this week, it's the turn of a trip that I took. A couple of weeks back, actually, I went on a bit of a road trip and it's following on the following morning from the last shoot when I found that incredible hidden gem on the northwest coast of Kerry. And it's an interesting one because there are some funny stories that go with this episode. And if you haven't seen it, actually, I'll link to it up here. But yeah, it was quite interesting to say the least. But the image that I'm going to take you through today was one that I really liked when I started to look at the edit. And it's a funny one because the location didn't really strike me as one that would be so appealing, but it really, really started to come to life when I started to use long exposures. So I'm going to jump over here onto Lightroom Classic and I'll talk you through the entire editing process. Let's go. Okay, so here we have the image now, and as you can see, it is a very striking scene. Now, I never thought that it would look as good when I was looking at it in person, but I think the long exposure really works here for this image. Now, what I want to do with this is to be able to bring out the color that we have ever so subtly here in this raw file. So I took this image not long after sunrise, so the sun was up now, and I was getting a blush of color that was hitting the top of these clouds, and I wanted to be able to bring that out. Now, also, when I look at this image here, we can see that this area around here is a bit of an eyesore, and that's effectively a bit of sea foam that was being milled around with the large waves that were coming in. So I want to try and tackle that as well, and I'm going to try and use some of the new features within Lightroom from the Remove tool, so the AI Remove anyway, but we'll get to that. So my approach to this image here, I think, is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to, number one, correct the very obvious horizon which is way off here so on this note what i want to do is use my grid lines to be able to make sure that i'm getting it as flush as possible and that is now straight the challenge that you have by doing this is that you lose a bit of real estate within the image so right now i've got a choice i can move this over here to the left hand side to get more of the pure wall and then i lose some of the cliffs or if I bring it to the right hand side, I lose a bit of the pure wall, but I get more of the cliff. Now for me, when I look at this, I kind of want to have some bit of symmetry in it anyway overall. And I think moving it to the left hand side here does seem to work best of the options. So that's the first thing that I'll do from that. And the second thing that I'm going to do from that is I'm going to crop this. So I'm going to go for a 16-9 crop. And the reason I'm going to do that is because even though there's detail in the sky, and you'll see that in a moment, um, it's not really adding to the image because it's actually creating a large grayness on the top of the frame. So by me moving this here now to 16.9, I can do that. But then I can also now get more of the left hand side as well of the image because when I straightened it, it lost a bit of that real estate. So just make sure now this is completely straight, which I think it is. And now I will crop that file. So first and foremost, I think that's far more appealing as it is right now. Now, Incidentally, what I don't like about this image is the fact that it's a very subject is that it's concrete. Concrete isn't generally going to be something that I would like to photograph. But what I did like was that you have this slipway going down into the water here and then this arches around here and then you've got this sea wall. Now, this is interesting because while I was there, a guy rocked up in his car at dawn, so it was almost still dark, and all he was wearing was his underwear. I thought it was a bit strange, but ultimately what he was doing was going in for a swim. I had a good chat with him actually afterwards, and fair play to him, you know, he does it pretty much every day, and as he had said, it's good for the soul. So cold water therapy, I think, is something that a lot of people are now doing because it is very um, good for you effectively. So now what I want to do on this here is I want to, number one, bring out the color that I have within the sky. So. Overall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle the general exposure. And as always, if you watch these episodes before, I'm going to use my histogram because that's going to tell me what I can and cannot do. Now, if we look at the histogram, it's effectively made up of some of two parts. So you've got the right hand side of the image here, which is your brightest points, which is your highlights. And that's where your color is, as you can see. And then on the left hand side here, these are the shadows and the mid, mid tones. And there's a bit of color as well within those. So I want to be able to bring out the color that I have up here in the sky. And then I want to make sure I can get 
this more appealing as well also. So first thing I'm going to do from this is I'm going to check my white balance. So if you take this eyedropper and you bring it over here to a grey cloud, so clicking on this part of a grey cloud, you see that it makes a very small adjustment to the image, so it brings it to 81 100. Now I want to bring in a small bit more, so I'm probably going to bring it up to around about maybe uh, 84 I think is what I'm going to do. So by doing it that way I'm adding a bit more yellow tone into the sky, which is what I would have experienced when I was there in the first place. Anyway, so then with that in mind I want to look at my highlights. So I say okay, I've got my highlight priority turned on, so if you click this button up here, what it does is it gives you visual representation on the actual image. So if I click on this you can see I've got these red dots. That tells me that that area here is close to being overexposed, but it's not hitting on this on the right hand side. If I show you, I bring the exposure up here slightly on this, you see I get a caution bar here and the more you go it changes colour and obviously you see here that now these are all blown overall. So I don't want to do that so I'm going to reset my exposure for now. So I'm going to tackle this by looking at my highlights. So I'm going to bring my highlights ever so slightly down and I'm just going to make sure that I'm minimising the um, the brightest part of the image here. Now on the shadows, I could whack the shadows all the way up and you see I've got all this detail to be able to get out of the scene, but I don't ever bring my shadows all the way up because it makes it too HDR looking. But that's the beauty of a raw file. You can get a file that seems underexposed, but you'll be able to expose that better by bringing up your shadows. So I don't think it needs to be 100, but I think I'll give it a significant amount, probably around about 58, and that'll bring out some detail here on the pier wall on this slipway but also on the cliffs here so this is not just a cliff this is a sea stack and if you've watched the video you'll know that I said I didn't want to come down to this far on the pier because I would lose separation between the sea stack and the cliff but what attracted me like I said a moment ago to this was just the shape of what the pier was doing and then obviously with the long exposure I think that worked as well as also. So that's the first thing that I'll do anyway here. Now looking at my whites, I want to say okay can I bring up my whites ever so much and I'm looking at the water here more so than the sky. So I could bring up my whites a bit more and make the front of that brighter and then I can also just bring back down my highlights in the sky as well there. Now these are showing me that they're blown so I'm going to deal with that separately in a moment. And then on my blacks, if I bring my blacks up, you see what's happening in the histogram is it's bringing these up here. So I can say, okay, I'm going to go probably a bit down on those because I've got a bit of room on the left hand side. If I go all the way down, you see that this is now telling me that these areas are blacker than black. So if I click on that, these are blacker than black. So they're underexposed. So I can say, okay, I'm going to bring those up just to the limit until they disappear. And now when I look at that, I'm dropping my blacks by 0.27. Now, Something I never really do, and I'm going to use it here, is use the slider for texture. So texture is going to be added here to this image, and I want to do it because this was all concrete. To give you a look at the extreme that you can do with this, if I take my texture and whack it to 100%, look at the detail and what it changes here on all of this pier wall. Now, I don't want to ever go to 100%, but again, I am going to give that an increase, probably go up here around 48 Clarity I don't need, but dehaze I think is going to help me on this image. So if I give this a dehaze, you'll see that it darkens down the overall aspect of the image, but it also gives me a better control of the highlights that I have at the top up here. Now, tackling something that I don't like, which is this bit of the foam or the wave that was being moved around the whole time on the um, by the sea. So I can go in here now to this and I can go in and say, okay, I want to click on this and use generative AI and I want to go object aware. And if I just paint in around this, what it's actually quite good at doing is that it looks and says, okay, what is the object that I'm looking to try and achieve? So it's saying, okay, I'm going to look within this region. And all I have to do is click on subtract and then press apply. So this now generates what it thinks is going to be the best mix and moreover it gives you three options to be able to choose from so you're not stuck with one and even straight away I think that has done it on its first option but we'll have a look anyway here by clicking this button you get to see the variations so I'll go to variation 2 and see what that looks like okay that's also very good too and if I go to variation 3 we'll see what that does I think variation 3 does the best job because if I go back to 2 and I give you a look here you see you get you're creating a bump overall which didn't exist and if I go back to variation one 
that creates more of a jagged edge on this, which didn't exist. So I think three is probably the one for me. So if I press on that and then press enter, now what that does is it removes that and you wouldn't even know that it was there in the first instance. So that's the main part of the image done, but I want to tackle this sky and I want to be able to bring out some of the color in that sky. So I'm going to use a mask for this. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to select my sky. And if I select my sky, it is only going to affect that part of the image. So I can now go say, okay, if I bring my exposure down here, you can see now that I'm getting all that detail in the sky, but also I'm now creating more of a variance between highlights and shadows. So if I take my exposure down, probably 0 0.65, and now I can look at my highlights, so that's going to affect this area that I said to you was overexposed. And then if I take my shadows, if I bring my shadows down here, it can make it very dark, but if I bring my shadows up, it can create a bit of an airier look within the image. But mainly what I'm looking for here is I want to increase, increase the saturation on this, particularly within the sky. So I'm going to increase the saturation here first and foremost, you can see all this changing, but now I'm also going to follow the same thing that I would have done on the main image, is to change the temperature and bring it a bit more towards the yellow side and what I do like now about that is that this color here is more or less matching you see the coloring that we're getting bounced off here onto the uh, slipway and I really like this part of the image actually because you've got a lot of detail that's here but you can just about make out the slipway continuing into the water so I think overall then I'm pretty much done with that image now there was an error that I would have made here and again if you watch the video on this you know it was a blustery day so I can see that there are some spots up here from water I don't even know if I'm going to be able to try and uh, get rid of them effectively but I'll go in and try so we're going to go in again here now to generative AI and I can just make them out here so I'm going to just select this area here it probably won't affect and select an object but I'm going to say okay I want to subtract that and let's see how it gets on with that it may or may not do it I'm not quite sure but we'll see what it's going to give us because it's going to give us three options anyway it has done it, which is great. Okay, I'm now going to take the next one, which is in here, and I'm going to say, okay, I want to do the same on that. So I'm going to go into subtract and apply. And while that's doing that, I had no uh, sensor spots. So if you watch my previous episodes, you know that I always had a sensor spot up here, but I got absolutely peppered um, with C when I was in Dingle a couple of weeks ago. So I ended up going and getting uh, my own cleaning kit because I wasn't going to get to Dermot to get it cleaned and I've now cleaned my sensor. So thankfully that has been resolved. And I think that has actually done that. If I press enter and see what this looks like, that actually has done a very good job overall. A small bit of remnants on it, but only because I know that it's there and I'm casting my attention to that. Final thing that I'm going to do for this sky is I'm going to have a look and say, okay, do I want to just increase my dehaze a bit more, just create a bit more mood and drama on that image. And now if you look at what's happened on the histogram, I've taken all the area that was all on the right hand side and I've brought it more into the center. So it's a far more balanced image, but I do have a bit of room here that I can change my exposure overall on the image. So I'm just going to bring that up ever so slightly being conscious obviously here of the uh, sky so apologies i'm back in the um, sky mask so i'm going to go back in here to my exposure and i'm going to change that here slightly and just lift the whole image and just being conscious that i'm not blowing there and then i'm going to go back in here and click on my vibrance and that is the image pretty much done and i really like this image i really enjoyed this shoot actually it was one that caught me by surprise because if you know my channel what i generally do is I'll go for a sunset shoot and because I've got the van I'll find somewhere that I want to go to shoot for sunrise. So I arrived here completely in the dark not only because I'd never been there before I was only looking at a Google map but also it was dark so uh, when I woke up the following morning it was a nice surprise to be able to see exactly what I had in front of me so thank you very much as always for watching I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Behind the Raw I hope that you can join me for my next episode on Sunday which is another one of my essential landscape photography skills and it's one actually which is important very similar actually to this is how I go about finding locations and what advice I can give you to find finding locations as well yourself and moreover when you do find the locations what advice I can give you to be able to get the best shots possible from that so hope I'm lucky enough for you to join me on that one as well so thank you very much everybody till the next time Schlange Fall.